questions. Questions. Sorry, t this took a little longer than you would <laughs> would have liked, but um, get your authorized version, authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be reading today. Read along with me. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me because the mouth goes quicker than the brain, okay? This one will be a benefit to the body of Christ, the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? Saints, you know this. We're just, um, what's, what's the phrase, brother? Chewing the cabbage a little bit? That's okay. That's okay. Because what does it say in Philippians? Huh? What does it say in Philippians? Come on. Come on. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, Philippians 3, verses 1 on to verse 2. Finally, my brethren, Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. And uh, a horse is a vain thing for safety. The horse. Okay? But true safety belongeth unto who? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Saints, this uh, it is, but it isn't. This is not intended really for you. Um, I was asked this, and it's it's a simple thing, but I've learned that there is a specific dear brother who will ask questions. At first, I'll be like, you know this. Wanting to hear... The response. I like that. I like that. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30. Now pay attention. Two verses. Verses 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure, without fault, without defect, nourishing, comforting, humbling, and unto the evil who reject God's word. Spiteful. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Look at verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Now, words. Add thou not unto his words. Okay? unto his words. People who attack the authorized version of scriptures um, who are adherents of Rome, who use the Roman Catholic Bible, such as the NIV, uh, John MacArthur's um, LSD, I keep calling it the LSD, but it might as well be, and whatever uh, uh, version that comes from Rome, they will say to us who adhere to the scriptures, well, King James adds words. Okay, you, you, you people who are brainwashed by the Jesuits, you know, they, they often tell you the Greek, which one? <laughs> they tell you the Hebrew, which one? Okay? Have you tried to read Hebrew? Have you? Do you know that Hebrew goes from right to left? Okay? Do you know that Hebrew, scriptural Hebrew too especially, there are variations because remember, back when the Hebraic scriptures, the Old Testament was written, I know that's not the only language it was written and I know, I know, okay? Stay on point, okay? Do you know that it wasn't the Yiddish? It was a beginning basis form of the Yiddish that is there in Israel today, but not it in its totality. What am I saying? If you've ever tried to read scriptural Hebrew, okay, the words don't blend together as if they have like the and a stuff like that whereas in english there are certain words connective connective words that help with flow of structure okay 
That's not something that you and I as uh, saints, brethren, need to be afraid of when these Jesuit-trained, mind-control uh, zombies spout off at the mouth about, well, the King James, and yes, they did. For structure, for flow, yes, because I'm telling you, have you ever tried to read Hebrew before? Okay? Have you ever tried? Okay, that that's, um, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's harder than trying to read uh, Japanese or Chinese. Similar, but different, okay? And even Korean, all right? They're, they're different, I mean. And remember, Google Translate can go only go so far, okay? But that's not something we need to be afraid of as saints when they throw that at us, okay? And the funniest thing is, these guys who say that to us ought to be aware <laughs> that scriptural Hebrew is doesn't flow in our dialect of English as it would uh, someone who is versed in Hebrew and know and reads it fluently. Okay, so don't be afraid of that. Okay, actually, it's like you know when you get one of these guys who've been brainwashed by the Jesuits. Yeah, half God said you need a degree or you have to go to the original, like that idiot Andy who attacked our dear brother. Um, you know, it's like throw it back at him. It's like, well, you of all people ought to know about the scriptural Hebrew and reading it from left to right and that there are certain words that are in English that, that are not in Hebrew. Okay, but God chose English as the seventh and final purification for his word. End of story. Okay, but, all right, verse 5, every word of God is pure. Every God, word of God is pure. Okay, we're just going down through a basic rundown here, brethren. Bear with me. Saints, you know this. This is not intended for you entirely. Okay? Proverbs, uh, Psalm 12, verse 6 and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. The seven language purifications that the word of God came through to arrive at its perfect and errant final product for us today, English the authorized version, okay? We have a perfect standard. Christianity, Christians, Roman Catholics, especially Christianity, doesn't have a perfect standard except the Jesuit trained cemetery and pastor or the Jesuit priest who tells them what to think, okay? The words of the Lord are pure words. One second, please. One second. Was, yes, yeah. Sorry about that. Had the, we're in an apartment, and if you have a, a certain electrical appliances plugged in on the same line, we blow fuses. So anyway, you needed to know that. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. And the Bible's mess, verse seven, verse 7 up all the time, usually. Thou shalt keep them, the words, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. From this generation forever. Okay? And you ask a question. Okay? Is there a perfect set of scriptures out there? Well, well, there are some like who read the authorized version. It's like, well, King James is just the best one we got. But is it perfect? No. They say no, it isn't. They're trained that way from Rome. Okay? Saints, we know we have a perfect standard. The authorized version is perfect. There are no contradictions in there. If there's something that seems to be a contradiction, usually it is uh, solved by rightly dividing or looking a little deeper into it. Okay? Very simple. Very simple. Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Verse 7 on to verse 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. There's that thing pure again. Enlightening the eyes. And where do you get the testimony? Where do you get the law? Okay. Where do you get the, uh, the statutes and commandments? Huh? From the scriptures. Okay. <laughs> Remember, in uh, Romans chapter 13, uh, I forget what verse it is, uh, the Bibles take out, uh, thou shalt not bear false witness. Okay, I wonder why, because the Bibles are bearing false witness. Okay, let's continue. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. 
sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Okay? All right? Psalm 119. Psalm 119. We want P-E. Or pay. However it is pronounced. Psalm 119. P-E. Or pay. However it is pronounced. Because this is not primarily intended for the church of God, I'm going to tell you the verses. Because when it comes to Psalm 119, I am a stickler to the saints learning how to read Psalm 119 according to the heading above the, the little paragraphs that all have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All are broken into sections of 8. Okay? So, but I'm going to tell you the verses. Psalm 119, verses 29, 129, unto 136. Thy testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light. Giveth light. Okay? Oh, and you can go, you know, for, uh, John chapter 1. You can go to many places and cross-reference into that. But I'm going to keep this on point and simple. Okay? The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I long for thy commandments. Again, where do you find the commandments? Right here in the scriptures. Okay? Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word. The scriptures. Okay? And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. And the spirit of truth, if you're saved, born again, converted, you came to the Lord his, on his terms, the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, called upon his name, and he saved you. You are once saved, always saved, in this dispensation. Okay? You are not once saved, always saved, you wicked heretics, in the Garden of Eden, in the uh, a patriarchal period, or under the law. Okay? And the only ones that are once saved, always saved, uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, are the 144,000 Jews. Okay? Alright? You Jesuit coadjutors. Okay? One, uh, verse 136. Rivers of waters run down mine eye, eyes, because they keep not thy law. Christians, Christianity, the world does not keep Scripture. Zanai, now, verses 137 on to verse 144. Okay? Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded, commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me, because mine enemies have forgotten my words. Willfully, too. Thy word is very pure. And then I being pure. John MacArthur's version, Mr. Jesuit James White, is not pure. Okay? The non King James Version. Anything that comes from Rome is diluted with dung. Okay? And the Bibles come from Rome. You're right, Catholic. Your church, Satan's church, gave us the Bible. God gave us the scriptures. You're right. You're right. Okay? Verse 140. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. I am small and despised, yet do not I forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, departing from evil, and I shall live. Now, see, we as saints, in Mem, uh, Psalm 119, Mem, from, uh, verse 104, that through thy precepts I get understanding, departing from evil. Therefore, I hate every false way. I hate Rome. I make no bonds about that. And I hate all the perverse daughters of Rome. 
Every single one of them. I don't hate the Catholic person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? I don't. Because most of the Catholics that you are going to run into, most of these Christians are brainwashed by the Vatican. Okay? It's when someone has made the conscious choice to serve Satan, they are our enemies. And I'm thinking of one specific beautiful bloke when I say that. Okay? But, we as saints, we are to hate every false way. We're going to deal with that in another video. Okay? But, also look at Psalm 119 AN or verse 128. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. Okay? Alright. Now, now, we have just looked at basic gleaning over the surface uh, verses and scriptures that uplift the scriptures. There will be a couple videos in the description box for you to consider. And if you wanna, if you don't want to watch them or go through the scriptures and whatnot as we do in those videos, uh, that's your problem. That ain't my problem. That's your problem. Okay? Today in this dispensation, you see, you gotta rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? We're not, it's not one method of salvation from beginning to end, as so many Christians want you to believe. It's not like that at all. Okay? It's not, people. It's not. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Links in the description box. Okay? If you don't want to watch those or go through those and you watch this and you spout off at the mouth, I'm going to block you. Brethren, go ahead and get rid of the comments. You, you guys can block people too, so go ahead. If they, if they, this is going to be hopefully really short, so someone with the attention span of a gnat can watch it. Okay? So, in Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19, okay? Now, very quickly, in, in Proverbs 30, I want you to notice something. The, the references that we looked at already, have you noticed something? What did you notice about them? Think, what did you notice about them? They were not specifically targeting a specific book in Scripture, were they? They were speaking in the sense of a general sense, like, hey, don't mess with God's Word. And what does the Vatican do? Okay, what does the Vatican do? Okay, they give you Bibles that can be traced back to Alexandria, Egypt, okay, loaded with contradiction, take out verses, demote Jesus Christ, teach that uh, uh, work salvation, you know, you're not saved, but you're being saved. And you know what the one book in all of Scripture that Rome has messed with the most? That'd be the book of Revelation. Because the book of Revelation, as we addressed in yesterday's video, uh, well, we addressed the, the premise that Satan is very well aware of the Scriptures, and so are the devils. They know exactly what is in here. They believe the truth, but they just reject it, okay? We, we talked about that in yesterday's video, okay? We did. Satan is very well aware of his demise. And the one book in all of Scripture that categorically, I mean, there are others, but is really beyond a shadow of a doubt, that number one tells us the destruction of Roman Catholicism in Revelation chapter 18 and how Satan himself is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Okay, Satan, who wants to be God, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, okay? Okay, he knows what this says. He doesn't like it. He knows it's the truth. What is he going to do? <laughs> what is Satan going to do? Okay, Satan can't take our soul, kill our soul. He can't do that. Okay, he's not God. All right? So, this important book, the book of Revelation, is a foretelling of what? is the demise of Rome and of Satan, okay? And how the apple of God's eye, the Hebraic Jewish people, not the Hamites or not us Japhethites, we're not even uh, most Shemites, okay? But how Israel is going to turn back to the Lord and accept their Mashiach, okay? All right? But the, the, the references that we looked at, okay, are not specific, were not specific onto one specific 
book. We, we're not even touching about in uh, First Timothy, you know, all scriptures. We, we don't need to. We don't need to. Okay? You can make the argument, well, it's a dispensational thing and blah, 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 blah. You can't make that argument. But overall, what is clear from Scripture itself, don't mess with the Scriptures. Don't mess with them. Don't mess with them. Okay? If you do, you're in trouble with the Lord. Now, the question comes. A saint, someone who is saved, born again, converted, of the church of, of the living God. What happens if a saint does that? Well, I, I, I really have a hard time trying to fathom whether or not a saint, an actually saved individual, would knowingly, purposely, knowingly and purposely pervert the word of God. Okay? As meanings to deceive. We, hey, we can deceive ourselves. We can fool ourselves. Okay, same thing. But, but, here's the thing. In this dispensation, we are once saved, always saved. We are once saved, always saved. Okay? And we're, we're going to touch on the, in another video, hopefully here, uh, this thing about the unpardonable sin. <coughs> with that, We don't have to worry about that today. Okay, we don't have to worry about that today. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Okay, but but the references that we looked at, okay, and like I said, uh, Paul, you know what, you know what? Here, let's let's go to Paul. Uh, what the Lord said through Paul about uh, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable just just to just to silence the gaze the naysayers. Second Timothy three verses sixteen and seventeen. All scripture, and the Apocrypha is not scripture because it contradicts the canon already that God chose, not Rome, okay? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. I told you that would work, brother. Anyway, okay, so there's the reference in Timothy. Now go back to Revelation chapter 22. Here's the question. Here's the question. Come on. Here's the question. Revelation chapter 22 verses 18 on to verse 19. Now, references that we have looked at didn't target out a specific book. Did it? No, it didn't. Look at this. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Now, 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 here's the thing. It says there, this book. Is this a, a totality encompassing of the scriptures? I do not believe so. Because we have already have references that we just looked at that tell us don't mess with God's word. It's pure. It's perfect. It's inerrant. Given by inspiration. Okay? Don't mess with it. Okay? We already have that testimony. All right? We, we already have. We just gleaned, simply gleaned over the surface of this. Okay? More will be in the description box. And if you want to spot off at the mouth and not uh, be a Berean and search these things daily, whether these things be so, shut your mouth. You're out of here. Okay? But what we have looked at already in the scriptures, okay, do not specifically point out one specific book. Okay? And you got to remember, when the Lord gave this to John, it was not, they were not calling it the book of Revelation. It, it's the Revelation of John, yes, okay, but, but whatever, all right? Is this, in verse 18, the prophecy, singular, of this book, the book of Revelation? Okay? You can make a, you can, you can say, well, it's, referring to the scriptures in its totality. I don't think so. I don't think so. We have, Like I said, we already got the proof that don't mess with God's word. Why is it so specific about this one, the book of Revelation? Because, like I said, it talks about the destruction of Rome and how Satan's going to be cast into the lake of fire just like all of you who follow him. Okay? And, like I told you, you can do the work on this yourself. The most messed with book 
of the Bibles is the book of Revelation. And you even got Catholics trying to tell people that these events already <laughs> happened already. <laughs> okay? For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. I believe the book of Revelation. If any man add, shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Again, this book. Is it the totality of the scripture or is it this book specifically? I believe it is this book specifically. Okay, I do. Because like I said, we've already got the admonitions that don't mess with God's word. And they're not signaling out a specific, like Deuteronomy or Exodus or the Psalms or the Proverbs. Okay? They make reference unto the law and the testimony. Yes, they do. But not singling out a specific book. Okay? Verse 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the prophecy, words sing a plural, prophecy singular. Okay? God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Okay? Now, you and I as saints, okay, we've already looked at the admonitions. Okay? But for us to use this today, we can. Okay? It's, it's even greater admonition to be like, hey, don't mess with God's word. Okay? You're asking for trouble. But, does that mean if someone, a saint today, were to do, God forbid, this, and take away an add to, that we would lose our salvation? If that were the case, then we would have a big problem, uh, doctrine contradiction, wouldn't we? And you know that, brother. You know that. Okay? I have heard people, when it comes to this, and especially Christians, well, that's, only, that's just for the book of Revelation. I agree. I agree. But see, you got to remember some things. The book of Revelation is written more so for the Hebraic Jews who are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? The time of Jacob's trouble is by faith and works. Okay? It is not by grace through faith. Don't believe these uh, sleazy believist uh, uh, Christian... Ugh, just don't believe them, okay? All right? All right? It's not. It's by faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. The only ones that have eternal security are the 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses. No. Hebraic Jew sealed out of the 12 tribes that appear in significance again during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But see, they, they come to this to defend themselves and to defend textual criticism, which is nothing more than, yea, as God said. And you know what? I believe they're right. I do believe verse 18 and 19 are specifically targeting the book of Revelation. And again, why? Because it tells about the destruction of Rome and Satan is going to be cast into the lake of fire just like any of you who follow him. Okay? Now, does that mean that we should not use it today in this dispensation for to warn people? No, that doesn't mean that at all. But when you encounter the arguments, well, that's just for the book of Revelation. Don't be afraid. It's like, I, I, you're right. But then again, you got all these other verses. Look at this. Go back to Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. Every word. Of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar. Now, that is in a general sense. Show me otherwise. Okay? That is. The book of Revelation. Okay? The book of Revelation. These verses specifically, okay, are, I believe, verses 18 and 19 are indeed targeting the book of Revelation. But see, through the scripture we already have the testimony don't mess with God's word. Don't do it. And what does Rome do? They mess with it. To cover their backside. So in answer to your question, brother, no. 
No. We will not lose our salvation today. Even if we even if a saint, a saint, were to do that. Or else we got a problem. Then, you know, I mean there's countless scriptures if this were the thing that would contradict eternal security for us today. I mean, and you know that. You know that just as well as I do. Okay? And you got to remember, eternal security is not there except for the 144,000 Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Don't be afraid to use this. Okay? But remember, you will encounter, trust me, you will encounter uh, someone who is brainwashed by the Vatican. They say, well, that's just talking about the book of Revelation. You're right. And the church and God that you serve has messed with this book, the book of Revelation, more than anyone in Scripture. Throw it right back at it. Okay? So, the answer to the question is, brother, no. Okay? Got to rightly divide. And like I said, there will be links for you guys in the description box about this. Okay? So, the answer to that question, brother, is no. All right? All right? Again, if you want to talk about it, uh, look, you want anybody, anybody who's a brother, I don't waste time with heretics and you try, to, you try to talk to me using something that's not the scripture. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to listen to you. you want to talk to me? If you want to be, please. Through the scripture. Through the authorized version. You come to me. Dude, dude you were using the ESV. Well, no. And doing all your textual criticism stuff. You know, yay hath God said, ah, you, you, you're barking up the wrong tree, pal. I, I'm not going to converse with you, okay? So, anyway, that's going to be it for this one. There will be links in the description box for you to consider, okay? So, uh, that's it for this one. I love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.